the other day we watched Shin Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider. It is the third in the Shin series. Um, but this time, instead of being Godzilla or Ultraman, they did it with Kamen Rider. So, Aiden, yeah. what's the plot of Shin Kamen Rider? Shin Kamen Rider, uh, Shin in Japanese means ultimate or god. Um, so, like the other two in this series, this is ultimate Kamen Rider. Um, so it's basically a reboot of the original series. Um, it stars, uh, it, it centers on Hongo, who was the first Kamen Rider from the original series, as well as Ichigo, who was the second Kamen Rider after the first one left. Um, the Kamen Rider, uh, there's an organization called Shocker, that's creating superhumans who are half human and half animal uh, in order to dominate the world. Hongo is the grasshopper augment and he's freed by the scientist who created the program and his daughter uh, because he's the strongest augment and they don't want him used for evil and he has to fight against the other augments who are all various types of animal-human hybrids, mostly bugs. Um, and eventually he goes up against the other um, grasshopper argument, and they become the Shin Kamen Riders, or, well not the Shin, they become the Kamen Riders. Um, the movie is, like Ultraman, it's kind of structured as a series of episodes. Or like a uh, Common Rider clip movie, which were common uh, back in the day, where they would take clips from episodes and mash them together into a movie. Um, Common Rider escapes the facility, and he fights a bunch of augments, and then eventually he goes up against the biggest augment, who is his love interest's brother, who's the butterfly augment. Um, yeah, that, I mean... It, it's about a man who's half grasshopper, who rides a motorcycle, and kicks the shit out of men who are half spider. Um, uh, and then uh, the, the villain's plot, I'm gonna note this here. The villain's plot, the butterfly augment, who's the final villain of this movie, is a... Um, his plan is to turn all of humanity into souls so that they can live peacefully in a different dimension where their souls go. Um, which is basically the plot of Evangelion. It's basically instrumentality, which is worth noting because Hidekiano has been one of the driving forces between all three of these Shin movies, which have all had uh, various Evangelion-related elements in the... Godzilla is basically an angel. The villain of this movie is attempting what's basically instrumentality. And Shin Ultraman doesn't really reference Evangelion, but Evangelion is just Ultraman fanfiction. Ultra 7, specifically. Um, so yeah, I thought that was kind of worth noting. Anyway, Connor, what'd you think of Shin Kamen Rider? Shin Kamen Rider is a pretty good movie. It's not anything too deep. Like, Shin Godzilla, I think, is a fairly deep movie. Yeah. When put against the rest of Godzilla's canon. Yeah, it's got a lot of... Stuff this movie's about... about this fucking cool grasshopper dude kicking ass for two hours. Yeah. There's exposition in it, but it's like, okay, let's get through this exposition so he can fight a woman who's a sc sexy scorpion woman. And then it's yeah. like, okay, let's get through this, ex uh, this exposition so he can fight the sexy wasp woman. She was sexy, yeah. Or let me get through this exposition so I can fight the butterfly man. The half chameleon, half 
Got a mantis, man. <laughs> yeah, no. You could tell that this movie was a lot less... Uh, I mean, it, it was, like, really fun. Like, martial arts. There's martial arts. There's CGI. I mean, the CGI can be a little flaky sometimes, but... It's, it's I, I'm not... A, if this was, you know, if this was the new Marvel movie, I'd be like, what the fuck is up with the CGI? <laughs> but this is some Japanese movie yeah that was expected to be seen by a couple hundred exclusively Japanese people exclusively Japanese people 10,000 Americans (laughs) yeah a couple thousand (laughs) Americans and and Japanese people so I can forgive the CGI and like the fight choreography is good the cinematography is good even though you can tell like I mean it, it wasn't it wasn't they weren't hiring the fucking Amazing cinematography. They didn't have the budget for the amazing cinematography you'll see in like a Nolan movie or something. But sure, but I think it's creative. It, it, you gotta that. put yourself in the mindset, and it's a very creative superhero movie. I, I like watching these uh, shit movies. They're always fun. You know, it's not. I, I know a lot movie. about Godzilla. <laughs> I and he, but I don't know a lot about Ultraman or fucking Kent Common Rider, but. I know these movies are fucking kick ass. Yeah. And and the pacing's fun. It's good. You care about the characters. You care about all the all the moments in it. Like I, I don't really want to spoil this movie. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of our audience probably hasn't seen it. And there's probably a few common rider fans here who weren't able to see the one day American premiere, so I don't want to really spoil the movie too much. That's fair. But yeah, there's a lot of cool moments. There was one moment where they were in the tunnel fighting. Yeah. Which was really cool. But you I know what movie that. it reminded me of? What's that? Take a guess. Tunnel? You'll never guess it. Tunnel motorcycles. To... It was the movie that caused COVID-19. And it's not Sonic. Blood, blood, bloodshot. Bloodshot had the same scene. <laughs> blood. <laughs> that was the first thing. It gave me PTSD. It was the first time I remembered bloodshot in my de- in like four years. You mentioned that. It's the first time. I we do have a review of Bloodshot, so check that. We do. Out. We did. We did watch. We that. reviewed Bloodshot like the day before the theater shut down. Yeah. Bloodshot underperformed, uh, uh, both because it was fucking Bloodshot and because of COVID. <laughs> I'm shocked they didn't try a sequel and just blame it on fucking COVID. Because yeah. that was supposed to start the Valiant Cinematic Universe. But they were just grumblings of the Cinematic Universe. At least they didn't full-on Dark Universe it. Yeah, Dark Universe is... Although I have heard grumblings of them doing a fat... There's, there's, do you remember the character... The Valiant character, like when you went to Source, because there were posters all over. Sure. Fat Supergirl. Yes, I do remember. That's Hope. That. Her name is. No, I don't think it was Hope. Oh no, Grace or something. It's, Grace, something. It's some know. religious thing. It's either Hope or Grace. But yeah, I know Fat <laughs> Fat Supergirl was supposed to be the next entry. But now I've heard grumblings that a different studio has bought the rights to Fat Supergirl. Hmm. Um, also, at the same time, you also had fucking, you had the Atlas Universe, a comic series that hasn't been around since the 70s they were going to yeah. do something with. Tiger Man. We could see Tiger Man on the big screen. The I still think Paramount should do it. Paramount's desperate for a cinematic universe. Yep. They got, uh, they got Transformers. They got Transformers, bro. They got Star Trek. Plus, apparently, the end credit scene of the new Transformers, we'll see sets up the the next Transformers movie. Speaking of which is also the next G.I. Scene. Joe movie. Speaking of that credit scene, when I was at the theater, I was in Las Vegas at the time this came out and I had to see it in a theater with people. And the fat black guy next to me said there's an end credit scene where they tease a Shin Ultraman crossover. Like I stood up after once the credits started rolling and he's like, No no, sit down, sit down. I saw on Reddit that there's a post credit scene. I'm like, okay, I, I mean, I, you know, you're, you're being pretty convincing by, by doing this. And then I waited through the whole credits and then at the end of the credits, it just plays like a 
like a real f footage from the original Common Rider, and I was like, yeah. What did the guy nice. say? Did he say nothing and walk out, or what? Uh, it, it, it was one of those awkward things where like he knew he fucked up, and like, but once the Common Rider footage started playing, like I stood up, and then like he looked at me. <laughs> and I like shrugged, and he shrugged, and I was like... You know, uh, I guess he got trolled, and then he trolled me. He, he sounded... he sounded convincing. He He's probably genuinely was looking out for you. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the gesture. It's... I, I mean, if there was something there and I missed it, I would have been disappointed, but... It wasn't, so okay. it was just awkward. Uh, yeah, but you can. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was tired. I thought about watching Spider Verse immediately after because the keys unlocked. But I was like, yeah, should I watch it the next night? I like Spider Verse. Yeah, I like this movie. This is one of my favorite superhero movies. I, I think I rank it about on par with Shin Ultraman. Yep. I still like Shin Godzilla the most out of the trill yep. the loose trilogy. But Same. I think God's like Shin Godzilla is like one of my favorite Godzilla movies. And Godzilla's a franchise I'm more invested in than Ultraman and Common Rider, although now I am interested to check out God the fucking Common Rider and Ultraman. Yeah. I bought a couple of the common the Ultraman box sets. I got Ultra Q, Ultraman, and Ultra Seven. Yeah, it's Mill Creek actually makes beautiful additions for those. I'm just getting off topic. I'm barely talking about the movie, but but they make beautiful additions of Ultraman. Yeah. For like fifteen bucks. Steelbook and everything. So check those out. Uh, but yeah, no, it's got me interested to check out more Common Rider. I like the characters. Um I, I loved the action. They they didn't. It was rated R action. It was fun. Yeah. And there was a lot of cool like martial arts and stuff. Uh, I didn't think it was a perfect movie, but so far I don't know if they're gonna continue the Shin series. But the ones that have come out, this I'm is very satisfying. The with. last that's officially confirmed, but there's, you know. Uh, the the deal granted, that was signed they, was for these three, but there's a chance that granted more they did Shin that's on Shin point. Godzilla five six years ago and then yeah and then six years later they just dropped two more uh, out basically out of the blue yeah so if they make another one in a couple of years I'll be I'll be there to watch yeah I would love to see more of those you know Super Sentai. Shin Evangelion, come full circle with it. <laughs> Where do you get a Shin Evangelion every fucking two years when Hideki Yano gets bored and wants to blog post about his fucking marriage? It's called the End of Evangelion, and there's like seven of them. You are right. at number three. <laughs> so, Aiden, what did you think of Shin Common Rider? Uh, it's good. Um, it's definitely Shin Goji. Shin Godzilla's my favorite. Um, Shin Godzilla's really interesting because it was a return to form for Godzilla as a topical metaphor for the impact that current events had on Japan. And Shin Ultraman and Kamen Rider are definitely much more silly, lighthearted movies. Um, like Ultraman, this one has kind of the episodic approach where um, Shin Ultraman and this movie both feel like three or four 30, 40 minute episodes of a TV show squashed together where it's basically like some exposition happens and every 30 minutes or every like 25 minutes they have to go and fight a guy. <laughs> So it's a little disjointed to match, you know, the fact that Common Rider was a serialized TV show. Um, so it's not as tight of a package as Godzilla was, which was something that Ultraman also had going on. Um, but yeah, it's fun. The action's really good. 
I like that it's a superhero origin story that gets past the origin stuff after like 20 minutes and just gets on with everything else. Um, and it's a complete story too. Um, there's no real empty space here. There's, you know, he exposition, fights a dude, exposition, fights a dude, exposition, fights a dude, and then he fights the big boss, and um, the, the second common Rider picks up from where that left off, which is how the show went. Um, it's, it's fun action, you get to see a lot of different villains who all have their own powers going on. You get to see the uh, signature flying kick moves. I like that they added a bit of depth to it where uh, Kamen Rider feels guilty about killing people. Like, right out of the gate, the goriest scene in the movie happens where Kamen Rider just comes and crushes a bunch of dudes' heads and sprays blood all over. And there's a little on the nose metaphor where he has blood on his hands and feels guilt about it, but is willing to, you know, he's willing to kill for the safety of the common man. Um, all really good stuff. Um, it's a little deeper than Ultraman, I think. Shin Ultraman. Not quite to the level of Godzilla. Fun action. It's a little disjointed because it's a, you know, it's a compilation movie of television episodes that don't exist. Uh, the CGI gets a little whack because Japanese movies <laughs> haven't caught up in that field even remotely, but um, even despite that, it's still really fun. Um, I don't want to say a lot beyond that. I think both of the common writers are really good, Ichigo and Hongo. Um, I think the female lead, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, who plays kind of Hongo's love interest, but she's also got a lot going on herself. Um, you know, they give her a lot to do without just being like a damsel in distress character. Um, and she's very interesting in her own right, and they make a good pair. Uh, Ichigo and Hongo, both fantastic, good action. Um, yeah, no complaints. It's a really fun common Rider experience, uh, surprisingly gory, lots of action, great action. Every 20 minutes on the dot, just like a TV show, you can expect some fighting. Lots of unique and creative villains. The final fight especially is really exciting and cool with the double common Riders, and it's good. It's fun. Um, no notes. No notes on my end. Uh, Shin Godzilla is still my favorite, but Kamen Rider and Ultraman both share kind of similar spots in being a little bit disjointed TV showy clip movies that are enjoyable, fun, action-y. I like it a lot. So Connor, would you recommend Shin Kamen Rider? Mm, yeah, of course. Uh, I do think, uh, it's not for everyone, but if you're into, like, a unique action-heavy movie that's very, uh, regional, like, you're not gonna... It's very Japanese. It's not an MCU movie, so if you're mostly into, like, mainstream American Hollywood, it might not be for you. But maybe it's worth checking out still to try to, if you're interested in broadening your horizons... And trying to see some overseas cinema. It's a very unique I do uh, think, superhero movie. Yeah, I, I do think, you know, this can get you into Common Rider just in the same way you might, you know, maybe it'll get you into watching some Godzilla movies and get into some Japanese cinema. Mm -hmm. So, so I would recommend it. I think it's pretty accessible to American audiences, but. You know, it's definitely you, you know, it might not be your cup of tea if you're very mainstream American cinema, but I thought it was really good, and I, I don't think it's a bad gateway drug to the some some overseas Japanese action cinema. 
So yeah, I'd recommend it. Aiden, how about how about you? How about you? Easy recommend. Um, I think this movie is much more palatable to an American audience than Ultraman was. That's true. Shin Ultraman. Shin Ultraman is very weird and childish and silly. Uh, and despite this movie definitely has its silly moments, but I think it's a little less so. Um, so I think this is a good entry point into getting into Japanese tokusatsu stuff. Um, I think the action's really good. Um, you know, if, if you're not big on... It's definitely still silly and a little bit uh, goofy and the effects aren't great uh, for the CGI stuff that pops up occasionally, but I think it's a really fun movie. It's nice. It's a nice little superhero twist. Um, I think it's an easy recommend for me. From me, um, Common Rider fans are gonna fucking eat this up. People who have an interest in Japanese stuff are probably gonna eat this up. There's definitely a general audience that's just gonna see this and be like, what the fuck? Um, I don't know. We probably don't have a lot of that in our audience, but um, yeah, I recommend this. It's a nice little entry point into. Japanese tokusatsu special effects martial arts stuff. Um, it's fun. It's really nice looking. Uh, Hideki Anno, I forgot to mention this earlier, but lots of, much like one of the things that stuck with me the most in Shin Godzilla was like the scene, the shot on top of the ambulance looking at the light. Uh, and there's lots of little creative moments like that in this too, like a brief one with the security cameras. It's very well shot and nice looking. Maybe not like a fucking crazy Nolan movie, but lots of creativity in the shooting, despite the fact that like a bunch of the fights in this movie just take place in like ditches or like <laughs> yeah <laughs> under bridges. <laughs> Highway overpasses. Highway overpasses. There's which also is a lot of so true to the original. There's also a lot of exposition scenes where it's like, yo, my buddy's got an unfinished house. We can shoot a scene. In the, <laughs> of the CIA. <laughs> it's authentic. He's shooting fight scenes under bridges. Common Rider. They when they shoot those fight scenes, they go to a bridge and they say, "Hold up, traffic. We need 15 minutes." <laughs> and just We're not kicking each other. <laughs> Kick each other really fast. <laughs> We're holding up traffic. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, they get a lot of creative shots out of it, even though they film in like the generic cheap shots that the this TV show is and was filmed in, which is really funny to me. Like, there's an entire scene outside of the the scene where the two common rider fight each other. Most of the fight scenes in this movie take place in highway underpasses, at the top of a dam, some ditch somewhere, like a fucking street outside of Tokyo, like some random country road like 30 miles out of Tokyo. <laughs> but they're shot really well, so it looks cool. But yeah, um, I'm meandering a little bit, but... I, I super recommend Shin Kamen Rider, it's super fun. Um, yeah, I, I really hope we get to see more of the Shin series in the future. Big recommend. Um, yep.